So a few months ago, my friend wrote me up on Instagram and asked if I've ever covered Formica with cement. I said no, but I would love to try. So here's the process of that experience. I was super, super nervous, but look how beautiful it turned out. I'm going to walk you through all the things that I learned today and help you with some of the ideas for a process just like this. This is just a standard Formica kitchen and you can see it has a backsplash and that was the first thing that I needed to tackle. I did some research and I found out that a jam saw or an undercut saw was exactly what I needed. So I turned to Amazon and found that they were a little bit pricey, but what I was looking for was a saw just like this that would sit flush up against the countertop and cut the backsplash off pretty quickly and easily. And I found out that Home Depot rents them. Okay, so I had to get a jam saw. I don't actually own a jam saw and I'm gonna need to cut off the backsplash before I do the countertop. So Home Depot rents tools. I went and rented it and it's this really cool flush cut saw. So that is gonna be the first step is removing that backsplash. And then I can sand down the Formica and get it prepped for the concrete pour. We'll see. I just finished getting all this paper down, some plastic, and I'm gonna start by cutting this out here. Oh, so this is where we're beginning. Oh, I'm not actually pouring anything right now, just using the jam saw and we're gonna cut that off. So I totally forgot my dust collection and my vacuum for this process, but I brought my RZ mask, which helps. And I have my eye protection, and it'll all be linked below. Because this is all one unit, it's supposed to be able to flush cut straight through here and just cut the top right off of there. I've never used a jam saw, so this is gonna be a learning experience. It's right there, and we're gonna get it. So on the jam saw, there's this flat guide that helps you go straight along a surface and cut underneath it, just like this. Using this jam saw was a lot easier than I thought it would be, and this entire process only took me less, I don't know, than 30 minutes, maybe 15 minutes, to cut the backsplash off. It was very messy though, and I should have had a wet dry vac to help suck up the dust. So this jam saw allows for adjustment so that you can determine the depth of the cut that you would like to do. I did cut into the drywall slightly, so if you replicate this project, just make sure you're not cutting too deep. You don't want to hit anything important. This clip shows how incredibly messy this process was. I definitely should have had my rigid wet dry vac. I'll link it down below connected to this. And then there was a place for that. I just didn't bring it with me to her house and I didn't think it was needed. And obviously it was. After the jam saw cut through everything, I was able to just pop the backsplash right off and throw it away. Back at Home Depot, all done. This sucker was awesome. It made a huge mess though. I should have used a, a shot vac. I didn't, I should have, but it was cool. Next, I was left with this little gap behind the cabinet where I had cut off the backsplash. So I'm filling that with some backer rods so that I can mix some Bondo and fill this gap before I pour. I didn't get any video of the Bondo process, but it's a putty that's normally used for automotive repair. So it dries really hard. It's a two part putty that you mix together. And I'll just cover this backer rod with that before I pour the cement over the top. That way I won't lose any of the cement down behind the cabinet, it should all stay just on top. Okay, I've blue taped all around the kind of blue tape that's connected to all of this is on. You can see that there and I've got it everywhere. So now my next step is to sand. I'm gonna sand everything from 60 to 150 just to rough it up really good. That way the concrete will stick and adhere. So I'm gonna rough it up, then wipe it down, and then do my first coat. Now it did say to do the edging, mix up a smaller batch and do the edging first. So that's what I'm gonna do. Oh.
off here is the skim coat. It is a white concrete skim coat. And I'm gonna go ahead and start mixing that and start with the sides. I'm gonna mix it into this bucket. So I'm just gonna do a small batch first and then we'll go from there. I got this bucket at the dollar store and then I grabbed a grout mixing paddle and the circular ones are a lot easier to mix everything out and have it nice and smooth. I figured out through this process that the very first coat it's better to have more of a peanut butter like consistency to get it all spread on and then the second and third coat it's better to do more of what's called a slurry coat which means that it's much more watery. Now it's time to put on the first coat and I'm actually starting just with the edges of the countertop and then pouring onto the counter and trying to get it as smooth as I can with my trowel. This proved to be a little difficult with this first coat as it's a lot thicker, it's easier to leave grooves. I tried not to worry about it too much because it can actually be sanded down. Just do your best. I will make sure to link all the products that I used in this video in the description below. I'm using just a trowel to kind of smooth everything down here as much as I can before it dries for the next coat. Once the first coat was on, we needed to wait 24 hours before I could start applying the next coat and I needed to sand before doing that as well. So I left it for the night. It's day two and then we're back and I am right now sanding down these ridges. I was having a really hard time getting a nice smooth finish, which it is concrete and that's just kind of a part of the look. You want it to be textured, you want it to show that it's concrete, but these were a little too high. So I'm going to sand these down and then we had a little incident with a kitty cat and some little fingers over here. So I need to sand that area. Let me see if I can get the kitty cat. These are the kitty cat prints <laughs> that were left. And so I'm gonna do a skim coat and fill all those in. Next, I sanded everything down with 120 grit sandpaper and knocked all the edges off. I don't wanna to sand too much because I wanna make sure that it remains porous in order to accept the next slurry coat. I started to mix everything in smaller batches because it became a little bit easier to work with. This is gonna be the slurry coat, so I'm gonna make sure and mix it a little bit more watery so that it's more smooth as I pour and easier to spread.
I found that using a water bottle and spritzing this every once in a while helped it to level out a little better and kept the ridges from occurring. There's definitely a little bit of a learning curve and I wish I would have practiced a little bit on a piece of plywood or on just some scrap pieces just so I could practice my technique and learn how to use the trowel and get the look that I was after. I found that if I didn't keep my trowel super clean every once in a while, it would drop some dry pieces of concrete and it would mess up the flow. So you wanna make sure and wipe the trowel pretty regularly. The second coat is a really thin cake-like batter consistency and it's just to spread and fill in any crevices or imperfections from the first coat. And that's day two. I'm gonna go ahead and let this dry for another 24 hours. Okay, everything's looking really good. I lightly sanded and now it's time to seal. I made the mistake of going with a sealer that was not an acrylic clear sealer, water-based sealer, and it actually turned the entire countertop a little bit yellow. And so I had to do another skim coat, let that dry, I got a new sealer, and now this is the new sealer, which is a lot prettier. It has a more white tint to it, and it definitely didn't alter the white concrete in any way. We didn't want that yellow, dirty looking color. This one was definitely much better, and the trick to the sealer is to let the roller do the work. You don't want to press on the roller in any way, or it will leave lines as you go along. So let the roller do the work, use more product if you need more product, and make sure and go over your previous line with the sealer to blend it all together. This is a satin sealer, so it will dry with a little bit of a sheen. And now I'm gonna let this dry and she has a cabinet painter coming to finish up the cabinets and to add some tile work in here. And the final result is so awesome. This was such a fun project. I love how it transformed the space, way budget friendly and fairly easy to do with some practice. Now it's been a few weeks and her cabinet painter came in, added some tile work, and it really tied this whole space together. Look how beautiful this countertop is up against the blue cabinets. And it was just such an amazing opportunity and I'm thankful that she trusted me to do it. If you're trying to upgrade some old countertops on a budget, this is definitely an awesome option. Thanks for tuning in and we'll see you next time.